Let's go straight to Gavin Morris, who is in Lismore. Gavin, rescue is still underway this morning. It's a bad situation. It certainly is. Look, it's been an incredibly tough night for so many. We're right on the edge of the floodwaters. Uh, I was actually uh, in this area and it was about a metre, two metres higher this time yesterday, so they are subsiding. I want to bring in a gentleman here. We're about to board uh, Joel's vessel. We've got his boat there and we're about to head out. But Joel has been on the floodwaters. Joel's a business owner from Lismore, gone through the 2017 floods. Joel, can you describe what you saw yesterday? Um heartbreaking mate pretty much yeah we've lost um our business again but it's nothing compared to some of the families we were dragging out yesterday that yeah it's gutting mate yeah can you describe the difference between the 2017 flood and this um this one was a hell of a lot quicker and, and a heap more destructive so it's it's a lot higher like i think i haven't seen seen all the, the the jazz but i think she's a, she's a fair bit higher this one yeah all right thanks joel we'll be joining joel about to get on board and we'll get you some pictures as soon as the sun comes up back to you carl they were heartbreaking images yesterday i'm uh, watching families young kids and the elderly being pulled from their homes uh, but what, a, what an incredible job the locals did in helping out ses and the army well gavin you're on a boat take us through what you're seeing this morning Oh, it, it's shocking, nothing short of it, Carl. Where we entered the flood waters, they were not that high in the extreme flood of 1954, 1974 or 2017. They were untouched houses back in those floods, but not this. We've come down the main street. This is the main drag of Lismore right now. So these are the first pictures out. Uh, the floodwaters have actually dropped somewhat. They were about a metre, metre and a half, probably two metres higher, I would say, on the roofs yesterday. So the floodwaters are subsiding, but you can see it's all still flowing through. This is complete and utter devastation here, Carl. Think about this. This is every single business, every single service station, every single Coles, it is gone. The recovery process for this town, for this city, is going to be phenomenal. Think of every single one of those shops in there, all of the produce lost, the electricity, uh, the walls, everything has to be replaced. Carl, my grandmother lost everything in the 1955 Maitland flood. She had nothing that predated that flood. Not a photograph, not a piece of clothing. This is what this community is going through here. Everything is being lost. These homes, uh, these people, it's going to be a really, really tough time and there's going to be a major call for help because uh, th this is a flood like no other. And, and this is a flood prone town. This, they live on the banks of this river, the two rivers where they meet, but this was completely unexpected, Carl. Gavin, this is going to be very hard for people waking up to watch this morning. I mean, they saw it over the last uh, 24 hours. Um, and they had to deal with the falling rain, that driving rain. But for them to wake up to those pictures this morning, that's going to be incredibly tough. We heard also that a number of people were still on roofs overnight. We understand that the ADF um, have choppers on standby. What can you tell us about any ongoing rescues and any stranded people this morning? Uh, well, the rescues, look, we're, we're not with those, but uh, we know that there's still people cut off throughout, uh, I think, East Lismore, and they've spent uh, the overnight period on roofs as well. Look, it's such a vast area that is underwater. It's hard to fathom just how many homes are gone here uh, and driving in how many other communities have gone under as well. It is going to take days to just gather the information and put it together to try and find out where people are still stranded. Uh, it's a vastness of water that it's truly hard to comprehend, Carl. So it is going to be a massive day and this is going to be one where we're going to have to call on all of the resources. Well, we've just hit something, all of the resources to, to, to get them into this town, into this community and, and this part of the region, all of the northern rivers, uh, because they're going to need every form of help they possibly can in the days ahead. They're going to, they're going to need, they sure are. I'm just looking at that shot where you are right now. It is literally business after business. If you own a business, you've also gone through a horrendous two years um, already. And now to have floods on top of that, um, that's a hard, hard morning where you are for those local businesses and local people. And each one of those businesses has a local family and that filters out across the community. Gavin, we'll come to you, come back to you as soon as we can. Carl, we're going to return to the suburbs after this cross. We're still in the CBD of Lismore where 
nothing has been untouched. Everything has been wiped out. Uh, this is the business hub. This is the business centre of the Northern Rivers and it's gone. I was listening to your interviews a moment ago and they were talking about insurance, flood insurance. The majority of these business owners don't have flood insurance. They couldn't get it. It was too expensive. So everything that they have, everything that they've rebuilt after the 2017 floods uh, is gone. It's completely wiped out. It took more than 10 years after 1954 and 74 to rebuild. But this is another level. And think about the rebuild to take it on the infrastructure here. What about getting the tradies in to try and put this city back together after these floodwaters subside? It's a gargantuan task that is mind boggling. The jip rocking, the electricals, the plumbing, everything. What about getting in and working out on whether or not these buildings are safe to live in once again, to work in once again? It is so overwhelming to float around these streets. We went down the, the main restaurant street and to think that below us, normally people are there, they're eating, they're dining, they're enjoying themselves, enjoying this beautiful city. It's a fabulous part of the world. But we're at treetop height floating down that restaurant row. Right now, we've just seen everything wiped out. We went past a pub where the Queen once sat on the balcony and waved to the residents of Lismore. That balcony was underwater yesterday. It has come down by around about two metres. But we're going to leave the CBD and we're going to move out into the suburban areas uh, where people are still on rooftops, etc., still waiting to be rescued. It's been very quiet. Yesterday, we had Black Hawk helicopters about. It's been very, very silent uh, as we've gone uh, and looked and taken in the massive devastation that we're witnessing here, Carl. So we'll move into the suburban areas. I'll, I'll mention also the industrial estate here is completely wiped out as well. So not just the CBD, the industrial estate and more homes than ever before in any other flood in recorded history. I think that says it all, Gavin, um, where you are right now, but also just showing every one of those businesses. Every one of those businesses has a local family just about, um, and for them to be waking up with that. But they've also had to deal with their own emergencies, some of them trying to get off their own roofs in the past 24 hours. There was some concern, Gavin, about the local hospital. Um, do you know at this point um, whether that's been affected or is the local hospital OK, which will be vital, obviously, for the local community? Yeah, we went past the hospital. The hospital that we saw was quite well elevated and safe. So we went past yeah. the hospital early this morning in the fog and the rain, but it was operational. Carl, I mentioned before my grandmother that went through the 55 flood. She lost absolutely everything. But after that moment, my grandmother was eternally afraid of the rain. And I kind of feel that many are going to have those same feelings every single time a little shower passes over. Well, you raised some good points there too um, about what we can look forward to in the next couple of days. People haven't been able to get insurance at all. Um, insurance is too expensive. And that's something to digest in, in the coming days and weeks, I'm sure. And also trying to get hold of the tradie. I mean, this is such a big area of devastation stretching from uh, Gympie um, in the north uh, all the way down past Grafton now trying to get a trade is going to be incredibly difficult. They're going to need all the help they can get. Gavin, we'll come back to you soon. Now, that is unbelievable. What locals are waking up to in Lismore this morning, it'll be heartbreaking for them, we feel for them. Well, we've moved from the CBD, uh, Carl, where we've seen those pictures go out this morning, just everything completely wiped out from the heart of town, every single business, every single service station. Now we're into the suburban areas. I, I'm seeing this for the first time with you. Uh, these are obviously people's homes. The debris is everywhere. Uh, the mud, you think of the clean-up process from here, how is it even possible? Because think of everything. Everything is gone. Oh, Joel next to me, he told me he rescued a couple from up here. They climbed out through the roof through that higher section. Just around the corner there, there was a, another gentleman and had his dogs left, uh, and Joel came and rescued the dogs. So they were in this area here. Uh, performing rescues. This is where people were on their roofs yesterday and we're just, you know, scouring the area and making sure that still there is no one left behind. But look at the, uh, the, the, the furniture in the trees, the debris everywhere, the clean-up after this. Think about electricity as well. There is no electricity, but generators, they're not working. You can't operate a generator here and there's no fuel for the generators either. It, it's just a mind-boggling situation that is all around us, every single street, every single turn right now. How can everybody get back on their feet? It'll take a decade at least. It's a long, long time to rebuild from here as we continue to move around the suburban areas, Carl. 
I wonder, mate, um, given you, you know the river there very well, you know where the rains fall and you know where the floods are, there must be um, plenty of other people too in and around the area that we're not hearing from, that we can't actually see yet, uh, who need rescuing. And that is, again, it's such a logistical, logistically difficult exercise to get people to freedom. Oh, you are so correct. I mean, we are in an urban environment here. This is, uh, you know, Lismore suburban area. But when we were driving here, there was so many other communities that we could see that were going under and they are out in the countryside. They are farms. They are, are, are cut off. Uh, communication, obviously, is, is difficult for many as well. Uh, they've got Facebook posts here, as we've been talking about, people trying to give their locations. But, you know, there could still be people here that don't have a phone. You drop the phone in the water by now we're seeing batteries that go dead and there's no way to recharge them so the longer that this goes on as well you know the more dire it becomes it's just a complete and utter mess it is nothing but utter devastation here it, it is quite biblical to the point of you know apocalyptic devastation i know it can be such a cliche these days to say that but uh you know this the, the feelings are the same as uh, what i had going through the black saturday bushfires we were the first to get in there and the devastation was the same, but that was from fire and this is from water. And it's just devastating when you see the true impact of what Mother Nature is capable of, whether it be fire, whether it be water. It can certainly take our belongings and our livelihoods and completely erase our past. These residents here will have their past completely taken from them, from these floodwaters, Carl. It's awful. It's awful for them. Our heart breaks for them. Thank you, Gavin, for that. Let's go to Gavin Morris, who is in Lismore, uh, monitoring uh, the rescue of those people. It's going to be a tough one this morning for everyone in Lismore with what you've seen already this morning. Yes, that's right, Carl. Um, uh, I've showed you the main street, the CBD, completely uh, inundated. There is nothing there, nothing at all. No businesses completely wiped out, and so too the business district. Uh, we've gone down streets now. We're in suburban areas. Uh, this, what you're looking at here is people's backyards. Uh, children's toys, debris is in the trees. Uh, the children, think of the children. We've got 4,000 students here uh, that now have uh, no schools. They've been wiped out as well. Their parents, their businesses completely gone and their homes, uh, where do they go? You can't help but think about the people missing uh, inside these homes. How are we going to get through this? It's going to be a door-to-door -door process. It's going to be a room-by-room -room process to try and find the missing people. Uh, we just passed uh, laundry still out on the balcony. The floodwaters came up so incredibly fast. This is a community that lives with this water drag and you're living next to two rivers, where two rivers meet. They're aware of flooding. We've had big ones here in 54, 1974, 2017. They built a new levee, uh, the Ballina Bridge. They believed that it would never go under. It went under by around about three feet. It was so hard, so fast, so massive. How did everybody get out. How are there only nine people missing? We can only hope. Uh, it's, it's hard to fathom that such a large area came under such inundation and the water rose so quickly during the nighttime hours. Can you imagine being out here at night? No lights, no power, and the water comes up to your home like this, up to the eaves. This has dropped almost two metres now. It's coming down really quite fast after its peak, but it's just a never-ending, continuous stream of devastation, Carl. Gavin, I appreciate your reporting there this morning. It really says everything so graphically about what they're going through there inside every one of those homes. Furniture, white goods, photos, uh, everything gone this morning. Thank you, mate. We'll come back to you soon. Gavin Morris is, is there for us again. Uh, Gavin, good morning to you. Um, what have you been seeing this morning? Uh, have any of those evacuations, have any of, of those rescues continued? Well, look, we've uh, we've travelled around quite a large area this morning from the CBD out into some of the suburban areas and we haven't come across uh, people on roofs, uh, which is fantastic news. Right now we're in a section that is probably the deepest part of the flooding of Lismore. You can probably see the power lines right there. Now, yesterday the water was up to the top of the power line, so we were unable to come through this section, but uh, now it has dropped uh, a metre. You can see some debris in the power lines as we go under them here. So it it's incredibly deep here, but Carl, I'm going to say some words that I know are going to upset you so much. Um, I, I don't even like to say it, but we heard that some people were looting. 
um, which is just, it, I, I, I can't even get my head around that. I hope it is not true, but I tell you, there are police out here that are patrolling uh, these flooded waters as well. So I, I just hope there is not an Australian alive that would think about doing that to this community that has been hit so hard. Uh, but the, uh, the the flooding here continues. It is, you know, subsiding. There is just so much debris in the water at the moment. Uh, there's bottles just drifting by. There's, you know, canisters. There's gas bottles. It's, it's very, very dangerous uh, at this point. And um, there are more and more people out searching and uh, checking homes, etc. But uh, let's hope that there is still no one out here that is, you know, waiting to be rescued. We hope and pray that there isn't. But, uh, yeah, it's still a devastating scene this morning, Carl. Look, there are, there, there are clearly, um, I think, nine people unaccounted for in the area. Let's hope that that's a communication and logistical issue, uh, nothing else. But we did hear from the mayor before, and there are a couple hundred people who are still waiting to be rescued. Gavin, are you hearing anything from the ADF? I know that's probably the most likely way, the easiest way, um, even though it's a helicopter, um, of getting people out of that, those particular isolated areas. Have you heard much activity from them, or has it been too hard? Uh, no, yesterday when we arrived uh, and, and the rain was still coming down very hard, very fast, uh, there were some black hawks in the air and some rescue choppers. Uh, we came across one chopper so far this morning that was checking the CBD. Funny that you say it, Carl, there's actually a chopper now coming in right behind me here. So, you know, they're obviously searching and, uh, and looking. So, yeah, there you go. They're right on cue, Carl. So that is the first chopper that we yeah. have seen for probably an hour or so as we continue to move through this section of Lismore that is, you know, close to the river and one of the deepest parts of Lismore that has gone under in this devastating event. It's just, I mean, look at those power poles under behind the power you. lines. And look how close it is. I mean, it's unbelievable. <laughs> it's unbelievable. It's quite, All right, quite, um, we'll, quite unnerving. We'll, we'll come back to you. We'll come, we'll come back to you, Gavin, I'm sure. Gavin Morris has been there all morning for us. Uh, Gavin, what are you seeing and hearing now? Carl, uh, I've returned to where we were when the sun cracked the horizon this morning. Back in the middle of the CBD, uh, I wanted to bring you back here. There's a lot of debris now still drifting uh, downstream. You're talking about Ballina. That's where all of this is headed. That is moving downstream to Korokai, Woodburn, and then to Ballina. Now the levels are beginning to drop. We've got the, uh, the flood line over here. It's dropped about two metres here, Carl, but incredibly, we are still above the record-breaking flood levels of 1974 and 1954. So even though it has dropped two metres, we are still above that flood line. So that gives you an idea of how devastating these floods are. It's an ongoing process now. We've been talking a lot about the psychological uh, trauma that uh, everybody is going to experience from this. So we've gone through the fear, having the rain come down so hard and fast. Then the adrenaline, you've got to get out, you've got to evacuate. And now here comes the emotions. This is when it gets really tough. The realisation that your community is completely gone. Behind me is every single business. We've gone searching, looking for something that has been spared, and there is nothing. There is not one business that is dry. Up on the second floors, but everything down below is completely gone. There is so much debris in the water, Carl. Everything is now drifting. Anything that floats can do so. And because the flood levels were so high, it's already placed in the trees two metres above us. The clean up process, not only on the ground when these flood waters finally subside, but what about all of the debris, the junk that's caught in the trees and up high? It's truly a, an extraordinary thing to witness firsthand, Carl. Gavin, I wonder too, um, given the nature of this weather event, whether these people had enough time. We saw in Brisbane that people were rushing to get stock out of, of their local coffee stores, of their butcheries, um, trying to get furniture to higher ground, second-hand stores. Um, they, they made a mad dash to try and get stock out. Uh, and some of them were successful, others weren't. But where you are right now, do you have any indication, uh, given the nature, as I said, of the flood event, whether they did have enough time? 
Carl, it was an extraordinary event from the get-go. I mean, I was amazed when I was witnessing 500, 600, 700 millimetres coming down throughout southeast Queensland. And it was a monster, this thing. It was evil, let's put it that way, because it was just driving in around Gympie, Sunshine Coast, and then it tracked south. But once it hit this region, it went to a whole new level. 500, 600, 700, 800, 900 to 1,000 millimetres of rain. Carl came down in a 32 hour period. There is nowhere on earth that can withstand that kind of deluge, that inundation and this is the end result of that. A, a flood level that many thought could never occur. Uh, we had the levee, we've got the Ballina Bridge here. Locals thought it would never go under. You'd hear the guys talking around the pub, it won't go under, it went under by three feet. So this yeah. system has behaved like no other. I've never seen a weather system quite like this one Carl. Gavin, I still can't believe uh, the scenes we're seeing behind you there. Thank you, mate. We'll come back to you soon. It's a harrowing time for people in Lismore this morning, isn't it? Can you bring us up to speed? What's happening there right now? Oh, well, let's go back to four o'clock in the morning. We were in Ballina. We uh, broadcast the news here uh, last night and we were able to get Ballina, but then we were almost unable to get back. The floodwaters were rising very, very quickly, but we were able to get through. And I've got to thank Joel and Joe. Uh, this is their tinny and they wanted to do this for their community. They really wanted to show the world what was happening here. And it's an extraordinary scene. I mean, look at it. This is the main street of uh, Lismore. Uh, we were here in the floodwaters this morning as the sun rose. We're up to all of the awnings there, so it's dropped considerably. It's dropped probably two metres now. But that flood level is where it was back in 1974 and 1954. It's probably just starting to come down to that level. So we were two metres above that. Look at every single business they are all gone, every single one of them. There's virtually nothing left and it extends right throughout the CBD, right throughout the industrial area of Lismore and the suburban area, more houses. People were living in homes here, believing that the floodwaters would never touch them because they hadn't been hit back in 54 and 74. But this one got them, sadly. It came on so fast, so hard, so unexpected. It was sitting over southeast Queensland all the way into uh, the end of last week and the weekend and then Sunday night it even looked like it was breaking up throughout uh, this part of the world across the northern rivers but then overnight that's when things got truly extraordinary rain so heavy it was fierce it was frightening locals have described it as the scariest thing that they've ever heard just a constant pounding and looking at some of the figures 180 millimeters came down in a 30 minute bracket during that time can you imagine it then at night the floodwaters start rising quickly electricity goes out, evacuation messages are sent and the SES and the workers, everyone has done an incredible job to save so many lives and get so many people out. But there's still obviously people stranded and uh, dogs and animals. I'm just talking to some locals here. They've been out in their tinny trying to do their best as well to help. But obviously it's a very dangerous situation because look at the floodwaters and how quickly they're moving. There's so much debris that is now drifting downstream to Korokai, to Woodburn and now to Ballina. So all of this is headed to Ballina, I'm afraid. Gavin, you were going through this morning go on the tinny, that tinny that's supplied by the locals there, and going through houses as well and seeing... Are you seeing people trapped in those houses? Are they safe? What is the overview of the residential areas in there? We can see the main town. I just took, uh, I think it was Tom. Uh, Tom was another local I just spoke to. He was searching uh, the houses. He was looking for an 80 year old relative. They haven't heard from him. Mm. So that is the kind of things that are going on at the moment. He's been rescuing pets. Uh, the homes, it's, it's so personal I think when you get to that part of the community that you see children's toys and you can see the tops of trampolines and so many uh, things floating and getting caught in trees debris like trucks and Tonka trucks anything that will float can and all of that is coming down and that's someone's personal belongings mm -hmm. and it's drifting away one thing that just moved us all, there was a big wooden carved out, I think it's the piece, I'm not sure of its name, but it's the, the part that you baptise a baby in from the local church. It drifted past us. It was very old, it had been around for a very long time. I think of how many children, how many people of Lismore and the community have been baptised in that, and now this 
is, well, this is a nasty baptism from the heavens above, isn't it, really? So those kind of items floating past you um, are just something that constantly uh, hits you. When you cover bushfires, everything is gone. It turns to ashes. But with floods, it's all left here. The, the debris, the mud, it turns into smells uh, and all of the goods. It's still there. You still see it. Uh, going through a flood is... is is very emotional. It's a very emotional process from here on in, trying to deal with what's happened and then going through the whole cleanup process and just calculating in your own mind that pretty much everything you've had, everything you've earned, everything you've built is gone. It's washed away. And if it's not, it's damaged. Oh, wow. The focus for now in Lismore, of course, is on the 1,000 people who are still trapped or waiting to be rescued. Uh, we will stay across that situation and bring our viewers any updates on that rescue operation throughout the morning. Gavin, great work out there this morning. Thank you. So let's go back to Gavin Morris in Lismore. Gavin, looking at you there, you're just at the edge of the, the lip of where the floodwaters are. Homes and businesses are completely underwater. We know it was higher before when you first got there, but it still looks so high now. And that water is really rushing behind you. It really is. Let me explain the situation. I'm on the double bridges here at the moment. Uh, right down there is the main street. So just over here, this is really interesting if you can come over here. That there is the levee. You can see the wave that is being uh, formed there because underneath that was the levee that was supposed to protect the city because they live on a sleeping monster. And that sleeping monster is behind us. Again, if we can just pan around, we're on the river here. We're on the bridge and we're completely covered off. So this is where the Leicester River meets the Wilson River. So this is the monster that you live with because this is the part of the river that made Lismore. This is where the ships were able to turn around. It was a very prosperous port and they used to come up and it was a wide part. But it's where these two rivers meet and that's what's made this part of the world so dangerous. There's actually cars that are abandoned on this bridge right now. But when these two rivers are inundated to the point that we've seen, Obviously, once that levee is broken, it then swamps the entire town. Now, as you said, Dave, that the, uh, the water levels have subsided. When we were here at sunrise, the water level was all the way to the top. And uh, we were in our tinny and we came down. So that's how far it has dropped since sunrise, around about two metres. But that, what you're looking at there, that up until this moment was the worst flooding in history. In 1954 and 1974, that's when we saw the water levels reach this level. In 2017, they built the levee, but again, it was breached. Think about what's happening with this community right now. They know that they sleep with this uh, dangerous water dragon that's right next to them, but they thought they had it beat with this levee system. Now, they've recovered from the 2017 flooding event. They've gone through COVID and now this. Every single business owner has to deal with the situation that is behind me, and that is complete and utter devastation. Uh, we've got Gavin Morris, who's on the ground for us in Lismore, uh, surveying the damage in the best way you can around <laughs> town in a tinny. It's the only way you can. Uh, Gav, uh, talk us through what you've seen in the last uh, few hours and, and if the water is receding much. Yes, it's slowly getting there. And thanks to Joe, our, our captain here, and Joel, um, and also just giving me so much information about what is around me. Underneath us at the moment is the caravan park. It's, uh, it's around about nine, I'd say 10 metres below us at wow. the moment. So we're just looking now out towards the uh, cricket field. Now, this is the tops of trees. So can you imagine uh, during the clean-up, uh, the, the, all of this is going to drop, but the debris in the trees, this is going to be 10 metres off the ground. That is not a roof that is attached to an amenities block. No, that is a roof that has been ripped off the sports field. So I'll get you to just take us back over towards the power lines, and this will give you a good idea of the depth and the ferocity of the water here, because look at that line. You can see the line when we're talking about two metres. So there it is. It's a defined mark on the trees. And look at these trees. Look at the debris in there. It's like a Christmas tree of junk. There's oil drums over there. There's tyres. Uh, things are going to be caught that high off the ground. They're going to be very difficult to recover for some times. Uh, we're just coming out onto Yorala Street here. This is a street light and that is power lines dipping down. So this is the furthest that we've gone so far this morning after being on the water since sunrise. So those power lines are dipping down underneath the water and no, there is no power in there, but there's someone's couch drifting by. Look at the debris over in the trees. Over there in the distance, this was just something 
that everyone in Lismore was going to be so proud of and they were so excited about. And, of course, we'll get back there again. There will be another game of football. It will return. We'll get back there. But they just spent $10 million on that grandstand and that stadium. They really wanted to build something that was absolutely fantastic and try and draw international games and big games into the community. So now we're coming back up towards Urala. And, again, you can see the power lines. How do you get this debris out of the power lines once nine metres of flood water subsides. We're going around the power poles now. This is going to be caught there. So to get the power back on, you've got to clear all of these lines as well. And now what's happening is as this flood water begins to subside to allow us to get to this point, what it's doing down in that main drag, all of the water was jammed up against the awnings and it wasn't letting all of the junk out, all of the junk, I shouldn't say that. That's someone's you know, possessions, it, it's their business, it's what they own, you know, prized pieces that were sitting in their shops. That is not now all floating out into the main street and it's drifting away. Where we've just come from, the waters are very, very still and the, the heat now is beginning to occur. You're getting these little sunny breaks, so it's going to become very, very humid and it's going to be absolutely brutal for all of those that have to now come in when all of this flood water begins to subside to begin the cleanup. Tonight, bravery beyond measure, daring rescues on the flood-ravaged far north coast, stranded residents saved. Tragedy too, with the body of an elderly woman found in a home in Lismore. A major emergency at Ballina as the community faces a one in 500 year flood. Also tonight, raging inferno, more than 100 firefighters battle a warehouse blaze in Newcastle. And Russia and Ukraine talk peace, but the onslaught continues. This is NBN News. Good evening. Tonight our state is facing a one in 1,000 year flood disaster. Entire towns, communities are completely underwater. And this afternoon our worst fears were confirmed with the body of an elderly woman in her 80s found inside her home here in Lismore. But amongst all of the devastation, incredible acts of heroism, many risking their own lives to save the stranded. Our team of reporters is standing by, but first to Gavin Morris in Ballina. Gavin, good morning to you. It was an ominous warning last night, wasn't it? Yes, it uh, certainly is, and it's warranted. Let's uh, explain the situation that we have on our hands this morning. Uh, think of a snake, and when it eats that rat, you can literally see that swollen part of the snake as it's digested. Think of a river system like that. So at the head of the snake, right at the top there, up throughout the Richmond Valley, throughout Korokai, we're seeing those floodwaters recede, but that pulse, that large swollen area, is coming now downstream, down the Richmond and at every measuring point, we're seeing the flood level exceed the 1974 level. So that is what's headed towards Ballina. And it's going to coincide with this morning's high tide as well, because Ballina is an island. And not only is it an island, the centre of that island is like a bowl. So once those floodwaters hit the floodplain and once it's breached, it's going to spill into the centre of Ballina. And that's why we're so concerned, because we haven't witnessed witnessed flood levels this high come down the river at such a pace, Carl. Gavin Morris joins us now for the latest. Gavin, good morning. Good morning, Carl. What is happening around me is so unnerving. I have never experienced anything quite like this. I just spoke to Tony. He has lived here since 1964. He too has never seen it. So what is happening? We are in the middle of Ballina. It is an island and the flood water is coming up through the drains. Look how it is bubbling up. It's coming up millimetre by millimetre ever so slowly. As we swing around and look at the main drag, this is happening everywhere right throughout the main road people are evacuating as you can see they're trying to get off the island some residents are choosing to stay and look down the suburban streets since we've been here that water is creeping up and it's linking up both sides of the streets getting deeper and deeper. The flood plan has been completely revised in Ballina, but there are so many residents that were completely unaware that Ballina could flood like this, particularly new residents that have purchased their houses in recent years. This is a very creepy situation, Kyle. The, the flood water is going to keep rising in the coming hours, and obviously these houses will begin to, to go under. How can you sandbag against that? 
Uh, look, we've uh, had an extraordinary morning. A, a lot of the comms now have gone down in Ballina, so electricity is going down. So we've had to move here to, to Lennox Head. And uh, oh, well, we've seen so much on the way as well. There's a lot of debris getting washed up on the beaches now. There's oil drums. There's livestock. Uh, you've got large trees as well. It's all because those floodwaters are now colliding with that high tide. I mean, the timing of this is, uh, is just unbelievable. To be there in Lismore when it peaked yesterday morning and no that overnight that huge surge was making its way downstream, hitting Korokai, then Woodburn, and then this morning arriving at sunrise, we were at that water's edge at the mouth of the Richmond, and we could see the debris beginning to build, and now it has continued. And, and where Carl is as well, it's extraordinary. Where Carl is, it's coming up over the levee, but because Ballina is like a big shallow bowl, we were driving around the streets uh, when we, you know, lost comms there, so we were just shooting inside of our camera. We've got some of that vision, but it's all coming up through the drains. But around that internal area, the suburban area of Ballina, there were deeper sections. So that water coming over the levee is now flowing down those streets and meeting with the water that's coming up through the drains. So it's an extraordinary situation. It was so eerie to witness uh, unfold from early this morning and continue during its peak, which is happening now. So what's next for us? Well, it's not quite over just yet. Let's take a look. First of all, that low, it retrogressed. That means it came back in over the west. So it came in over land. That actually was a good thing because the friction of the land slowed it down. It weakened the system. Looks like it's going to boomerang out and then move off the mid-north coast. It may regather a bit of energy. And what's that uh, going to do? Well, it's going to spray in more wet weather in the form of showers, heavy at times, and storms likely to be embedded in that system across much of eastern New South Wales and that of course is uh, also going to affect some of these flood affected areas. We've already had storms here throughout today and we'll probably see even more throughout tomorrow. Uh, so more cloud showers, large seas and swell uh, but hopefully all of this system will weaken and finally deteriorate. For now it is back to the studio. Tash. Thank you Gav. The SES says some 6,000 homes were impacted by flood water at Ballina. Tonight there are still ongoing power and phone outages. But throughout the devastation there is one thing that remains strong, as always, and that is the Aussie spirit. Mates helping mates, shining through. The skies have cleared, but the disaster still hangs over Ballina like a cloud. Thousands of homes impacted, flood water still laps at properties. My heart's just breaking for everybody that has lost everything, you know? Things you can't replace. On Tuesday, the town was evacuated. Those we spoke to today are those who remained behind. All over the road. <laughs> it was. Watching on from the balcony as the sludge slowly recedes. It's scary times. I was in Toowoomba floods and I've got to say I think this one is worse, yeah. yeah. Thousands are still without power and communication is down. Yeah, well, some people have got it and some haven't. It's a bit iffy. A common theme across the region. The Northern Rivers is out of supplies. At Lennox Head, bowsers are bone dry. Shelves at the servo are being stripped bare of essentials. This is not something that just happens. The large, the large scale of land right now that is underwater is phenomenal. The SES is working to get food, medicine, water and fuel to the most desperate communities. I had to go up to Boron to look for food and stuff. There wasn't no food around this area, so even fuel, they ran out of fuel up at Boron. They had to go to Bangalore. What we're trying to do is get the um, Ballina Fair open, so we're going to have uh, a couple of stores open because we've got a lot of people that are, have got basically nothing. For now, it's a one-shop town. The cellar, the only place open, using a diesel generator to serve weary-eyed and thirsty customers. For two days not having power, people are still calling them cold beers, so that's all we want in the bottle shop industry, cold <laughs> and that, beers. And that's all they need, just that's sitting it. out waiting for those flood waters to recede, eh? That's it, and everyone's coming with a smile on their face, even if they've dead set lost everything. It's very sad times, but we're all banding together, and that's the main thing. The community's been amazing. A town, one among many, devastated, but its spirit is strong. Everything's uh, a bit messed up, you know, but... Is what it is. The roads are dry now. Everyone's safe. 
Yeah, wow, what can I say? Uh, myself and my camo, Tash, we were feeling a little bit beat up and down this morning, but it was the people of Ballina that helped raise up after visiting them today and uh, putting that story together. Tash, if we can find some fuel, I may join you back in the studio tomorrow night. We'll see how we go. <laughs> it's all been a bit overwhelming, hasn't it? Thanks, Gav. Great job to you and to Grimmy. We hope to see you back here tomorrow night. Of course, our coverage will continue, though. Tash, on our way here, just a matter of an hour and a half, two hours ago, we drove through the devastated community of Woodburn. Residents were there out on the streets. Of course, there is just junk everywhere, and the floodwaters are rising rapidly. These floodwaters coming up around my ankles still have to flow downstream overnight and throughout tomorrow. So, Tash, there is still a very big, dangerous 24 hour period ahead of them, I'm afraid. Our thoughts are with everyone there. Thanks so much, Gav. Welcome back live to Lismore, where it's fair to say that the second major flooding event in weeks came as a nasty shock to many residents. But incredibly, for some, their spirits are still high as they await for these floodwaters to recede so they can move back in and begin the recovery process for a second time. Stuck and sinking caravans caught up in surging flood water and debris seeping out across town after the wilson's river peak yesterday devastating lismore once again that's my little rental house beside mum so we'll just get it washed out again today underneath scenes entirely unexpected two major floods in only one month we thought we'd dodged a bullet to be honest with you, and we followed the warnings, we did everything right. This morning, suburban streets were once again underwater. Locals cut off from the town with evacuation orders back in place. It looks like it's peaked here. If there is any form of good news I can deliver, it looks like the river has peaked just below 12 metres. For many, it's going to be a long wait for water levels to recede before they can begin the clean-up. Pretty happy, or well, not happy about it, but happy it didn't go that high again. But where it's already dry, the hard work has begun and spirits are strong. It should be a little bit easier to get on top of things this time around. Gurneys will be out, the brooms will be out, uh, people will just start cleaning up again. Tonight, there's hope in Lismore. The town and its people will emerge stronger than ever before. We've done it before, we can do it again and we'll get through it and we'll rebuild bigger and better than ever. We have team coverage in the flood zone. First to Gavin Morris in Lismore. Gavin, what can we expect there today? Ali, good morning. Instantly, I literally cannot believe what I am looking at at the moment. Brunswick and Hindmarsh streets. Uh, behind me again, the road signs are under. There was footage from yesterday afternoon that already went viral. Caravans, now people's homes floating down the streets. And up behind me are caravans. There's a caravan park uh, underwater just to my right. Right behind my camo, there's another school that is back underwater. The the flood waters came in just under 12 metres overnight, so it just kept coming in after dark and it has risen again, flooding, inundating the CBD of Lismore. And again, these suburban houses have gone under. Now, in the coming hours, as the sun comes up, we're going to again travel down these streets in a boat and check out the damage that has occurred. I was doing this... 30 days ago on the 1st of March, Ali, and here we are again. Two of the biggest flooding events in history in one month. Extraordinary scenes yet again from Lismore in the coming hours, Ali. Yeah. We have team coverage in the flood zone. Let's go first to Gavin Morris in Lismore. Gavin, what is the damage there this morning? Well, Ali, I'm going to try and find some good news here the best that I can. First of all, it is calm in Lismore. We're not affected by the winds of that offshore low. That is a high cloud base. That's Alto Stratus. We're not going to get rain from that. This is the levee wall. When I was here on the 1st of March, the water was well over my head and overflowing this wall and down into the CBD, which is behind me. So you can see inundation down there in the main street of Lismore, but it isn't as severe 
as the flooding that occurred at the uh, beginning of the month. Now, there's a lot of confusion going on about exactly what happened. Tuesday afternoon, the eye of the storm, the centre of that low, the core moved across this region. It went blue skies, it went calm. People got a sense of complacency because of that and some of those restrictions were then lifted. But what happened, that low then moved offshore and it found the incredibly warm waters of the East Australian current, which is sitting at 27 degrees. 27 degree water can sustain a cyclone. And that's what happened. It pretty much went cyclonic as we went into the evening. It drew massive amounts of moisture and then dumped those huge amounts across the region, causing the flooding. But the good news is these floodwaters are now beginning to subside. Let's go first to Gavin Morris, who is in Lismore. Gavin, these residents have had enough. Yes, they certainly have, and understandable. I mean, look at the scenes here. But I tell you, Ali, at the moment, there is a, a real sense of calm. In every sense of the word right now, the weather is calm. The floodwaters are very, very still. They're actually not moving that much at all. That is because the ground just cannot take any more. It's just sitting there, so it isn't subsiding. But the residents are also relatively calm. They've been through this before, and now they're waiting for this incredible mess here to subside so they can get in and begin the clean up yet again but it's been a horrendous month for them and you've got to feel for them and and everything that they've gone through but let's hope we start to see some sunshine as the days progress we have team coverage in the flood zone first to gavin morris in lismore gavin what can we expect there today Ali, good morning. Instantly, I literally cannot believe what I am looking at at the moment. Brunswick and Hindmarsh streets. Uh, behind me again, the road signs are under. There was footage from yesterday afternoon that already went viral. Caravans, now people's homes floating down the streets. And up behind me are caravans. There's a caravan park uh, underwater just to my right. Right behind my camo, there's another school that is back underwater. The flood waters came in just under 12 metres overnight, so it just kept coming in after dark and it has risen again, flooding, inundating the CBD of Lismore. And again, these suburban houses have gone under. Now, in the coming hours, as the sun comes up, we're going to again travel down these streets in a boat and check out the damage that has occurred. I was doing this 30 days ago on the 1st of March, Ali, and here we are again. Two of the biggest flooding events in history in one month. Extraordinary scenes yet again from Lismore in the coming hours, Ali.